I heard about it way in the dressing room. We're not gonna get we're not gonna give it too much credence and too much attention, man. It's, it's a great night tonight. Um, I'm really disappointed in the other side. I really don't even know what they said in detail, but it's just it's just a bad look for them. You know, we're not gonna get in the pig pen and get dirty. Uh, I thank God for the grace to get in here tonight. Uh, but as far as trying to explain myself and answer questions like uh, you know some of the things that they're talking about, I just refuse to get into it. It's not about them anymore. They've done a lot of talking leading up to this fight, and I told you guys that they can dominate the headlines leading up to the fight. We stay quiet, right? I said, but Sunday morning, we want to dominate the headlines. So they can go back up to the high altitude and keep breathing that good air and going to do what they're going to do. It's not about them anymore. It's about us. So who made Abel the voice of boxing? That's what I've been trying to figure out for the past couple years. I agree. I agree. I mean, I'm, I'm just like, there's no no disrespect to the man. You know, I feel like he does a good job with his fighters, and I'll just leave it at that. But who gave him, like, the absolute authority to, like, speak on people? Like, and not just me. I hear that guy talk about a lot of people in a disrespectful manner, you know, as if they just on some pedestal or something. Man, they, they got to stay humble, man. You don't feel it, then it must be too real to touch. I'm lying if I ain't correct. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. And I told you guys, new media was gonna make it bad for some of y'all. And the worst thing is, this is the technological age. There's social media, there's every single device you own has a recording and a camera option, whether it be a cell phone, a tablet, a laptop, you know what I mean? And that's what's getting a lot of the old media in trouble. You know what I mean? There's just too many ways. You go to Google, you can search and find articles. Just put in a couple key words and then find this stuff out. Now, I want to talk about, I just watched the interview. Shout out to Fight Hype, link in the description. Andre Ward, there was like a round table setting. He was in Texas. He had a book signing and then he went to the Canelo Liam Smith fight. Congrats to Canelo on the TKO victory. And Ward was just talking with media that were in, in Texas. And he says they wanted to be transparent. They offered Golovkin, his his team. There's a dialogue between Rock Nation, who represents Andre Ward, and Tom Loeffler, who represents Triple G. And there was negotiations. He says he can prove it. He could pull up the email right now. And he says my word should mean something. He said I don't I don't feel I have to do all that to prove it. It is what it is. But I can't do it. You know what I mean? And he told me. Or he says in this interview that there was a dialogue and to be transparent, they offered him 50-50, 50 with the purse split, the weight, and Team Triple G said no. Maybe in 2017, if the fight's still being desired, we can talk about it. So to me, I do believe this. I do know other stuff. There's a lot that I know that I'm not at liberty to tell. I've, I've heard stuff like this from inside the war camp and just people outside of the war camp. I, I've heard a lot, but again, there's there's some things in this business, reputation is everything, so I can't just be blabbermouth, like off record conversations for the sake of views or whatever, just to stir up the conversation. You know what I mean? Sometimes people have certain reasons for, they don't want information to come out or they don't want, their name caught in the middle because they're a middleman, but they were privy to a certain conversation. And I don't, I don't feel like I have to go too much more into detail, but the bottom line is, this is what I've told people. And it's funny because now that Golovkin is being pitted against Canelo, you have a lot of diehard Canelo fans that I've seen that are talking about how Golovkin, but he ducked Ward. And when I made videos talking about how Golovkin, when it was current, when when the negotiations were going on and the headlines, when Ward was still at 168 technically, right? I was making videos and I was on that front line telling you guys, it doesn't look like Team Triple G wants this Ward fight. It, you could, anybody, Stevie Wonder, ribbon in the sky for all, anybody could see it that they didn't want the Ward fight, anybody. He clearly avoided the fight. You guys can get sensitive. You can get mad, you can say I hate Golovkin, you can say you're racist, all that, none of the sticks and stones, that doesn't hurt me, because I know what I'm saying 
and I know what place is coming from. I'm not saying I don't hate. I've been to Glovekin fights. I know there's people that hate Ward, but they don't go to Ward fights. They don't cover Ward fights. They don't go to Ward media days, things like that. I've covered a Glovekin fight before. You know what I'm saying? I try to get to all the fights, no matter if you think it's a style or a person that I like or don't like, right? If it's a good fight and it makes sense and it's in my area or, or within my budget to go, you know what I'm saying? I always try to get to the fight and get that coverage, that premier coverage for you guys. So we already know what it is and it's it's very apparent. And now we're having this issue where Canelo's team is saying, hey, we offered them two to three times. We offered them a, a lump sum of money, a pretty chunk of change that he's never had before. And now it's looking like there may be more to that story too. And the thing is, Ward, he did this interview back in the day before one of his fights at his media day. And I meant to go to that media day, but I was, I got caught up. But he was like, he's like, Tom, he said, I seen Tom. I was like, you got to start, you got to stop lying to these people. You got to tell the truth. You got to tell the truth what it is. And see, that's the thing. The, the thing with when it comes to fanatical fans, it's, it's a problem in boxing. But some people are going to take this out of context. For me, I think the Gennady Golovkin diehard, keep in mind, if you like Golovkin, there is no problem with that. If you're what I like to call a standard Golovkin fan, meaning you like the guy, his personality, he's humble, you like his fighting style, you like his highlight reel, I have no beef with you. That's not an issue. He's a good fighter. I like him, right? But it's the extreme fans that make you want to see an underdog like a Kell Brook do well against him because it's the, those extreme fans and the reason being why I'm saying extreme is because out of you look at core groups every popular fighter has radical fans we know this Floyd Mayweather has radical fans Manny Pacquiao has radical fans Miguel Cotto Canelo Adrian Broner anybody popular has radical fans but in my opinion I think some of the radical Golovkin fans that I've seen in comment sections are perhaps the worst. And the reason I'm saying the worst is because the fighter they're representing has proven the least amount. You know what I'm saying? Like if you look at, for example, Mayweather, 19 years, beat all these champions, undefeated fighters, beat fighters, champions, former champions. Look at what he's done. Look at his performances. Pacquiao moved up eight weight classes, beat solid guys like Marco Antonio Barrera, the Eric Morales, the Oscar De La Hoya, Ricky Hatton, Shane Moe. It goes on and on. And even Canelo, whether you thought the Lada fight was close or not, he still has him on the resume. And it was a competitive fight. Even I had Laura winning, but I didn't have it a blowout for Laura. I thought what he did in those early rounds gave him the fight by one or two rounds right that's what i thought you know what i mean some people had it 115 113 the other way for canelo but that's neither here nor there he still stepped in, in the ring with angulo floyd mayweather austin child shame so he has a better resume so when you see radical canelo mayweather pacquiao fans the fighter that they're radical for has done more than what golovkin i think golovkin gets a lot of premature praise you got to look at it canelo turned pro at age 15 so in essence he had to learn on the job he didn't come from an amateur experience and you look at golovkin he does have amateur experience he's older he's 34 for for boxing you know what i mean that's look at oscar de la hoya who was he fighting when he was 34 who was floyd mayweather fighting when he was 34 who was pacquiao fighting when he was 34 you know what i mean you guys put it in the comment section i want you to really research it this is like a homework assignment and then you look at golovkin he's 34 and he himself said the best person the biggest challenge for me is Kell Brook, a welterweight moving up two weight divisions. You know what I mean? So that's what makes it, it it worse is the radical fans. You're coming from a place where your fighter still has so much more to prove. He's proven he's good, but he hasn't proven he's great. And the only way that you can prove that is through time and consistent performances. You know what I mean? Like, I want to see a fight where Golovkin power is... is is not the the only solution for him you know what i mean like you're in a fight where power is just not only doing it you know what i mean like andre Durrell versus james DeGale. james DeGale had to use a little bit more than power because he hurt him he hurt Durrell with the power but that wasn't enough to get the win only you know what i mean he had to not blow his wad and be able to fight good for 12 rounds things like that so i mean to wrap this up 
this is something I already knew, but it's just funny that more and more people are starting to uncover and unveil it, that Team Golovkin didn't want the Ward fight. And as soon as you ask, as soon as you ask for Golovkin to move up, no! The fans get so irate and mad. Mayweather just did it. Like, no, fuck you, Floyd, stay retired. Like, why can't Golovkin move up? So, Kell Brook can dare to be great, move up two divisions, but Golovkin can't. And then come back down. You know what I'm saying? Amir Khan can dare to be great and move up to Canelo weight at 155. And, you know what I'm saying? Canelo has moved up in weight. Golovkin hasn't. You know what I'm saying? So, it's it just, it's seeming a bit unfair. You know what I mean? You can... And the funny thing is, I know how a lot of people try to marginalize this stuff that I'm saying, like, oh, it's only black people that feel this way or whatever, because Floyd said comments, um, Adrian Broner said comments, things of that sort. But you know what the funny thing is? First of all, the two people we just, that I use for example, have done just that. Floyd's moved up five divisions. Broner, at age 24, was a Ford weight division champion. And he moved up two weight classes to fight Pauly. And then one of the toughest punchers in the division didn't win it, but he still fought him in Marcos Maidana. So it's not like calling the kettle black because they actually have moved up in weight. You know what I'm saying? So they're in a position. Another person who has had that critique is Gabe Rosado. He's moved up in weight. He moved up to fight Golovkin. You know what I mean? He was... He was in a beautiful position at 154, and this might have actually hurt his career because he was a he was a mandatory for, I believe, K-9 Bundred's belt. See, you guys don't even know boxing. That's why I know who knows boxing. Some of you guys don't even know boxing. You don't know stuff like this. Gabe Rosado was a mandatory for, I believe, Cornelius K-9 Bundred's belt at 154, and then the opportunity, the phone rang for a Golovkin fight. It was slated for a catchweight, and he's like, nah, I don't want it to be no excuses, so I want to have this fight at the full 160, so there's no excuses. And he actually, it took a while for Golovkin to stop him. And Golovkin allegedly had the flu. So imagine if he fought him at the catchweight of 157 or whatever. You know what I mean? He might have, Gabe Rosado might have even had a better shot or lasted the whole 12. You know what I'm saying? And ended that KO streak or whatever. So that's my point, man. It's not just one demographic of people. It's not just black people. Gabe Rosado's not black and he's saying the same thing. I'm talking to a ton of people. Glenn Tapia. You know what I'm saying? And Robert Garcia, he's from Oxnard, Mexican, Mexican, American. He said the same thing. He said, Kell Brook did it. He's like, fuck, why, why can't Golovkin fight the winner of Ward Kovalev? You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be interesting. There's a lot of pressure on, on Golovkin to make some significant moves in the sport of boxing. And again, it's not just about moving up solely, but they set the tone. They said we'll fight anyone from 154 to 168. People didn't just arbitrarily throw out, why doesn't he go to super middleweight? You know what I'm saying? So it's like me saying, oh, you know what? I could do I could do the illest backflip. I don't even have to like I don't even have to really prep or nothing. I could just do from a standstill, I could do a backflip. And then people are gonna ask me, okay, do it. Nah, I don't want to. I could do it, but I don't want to. That's what it's like. We could fight and beat anyone's ass from 154 to 168, knock them out. Nobody can go 12 rounds with Golovkin. Okay, let's see it. No. What? Let me know what you guys think. I do agree that Golovkin avoided the Andre Ward fight. You guys can believe whatever you want. Drop in the comment section. New media. Make sure you like my video as always. Hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego signing off.